Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while, which is go over a Crisis Dungeon. So we're going to do the new Hojo's Laboratory, which just came out, and before we get started, I will show you the symbol enemy info. Um, depending, you know, what order you do it in, you don't have a choice, you have to go Behemoth uh, first, so you want physical attack down for him. Uh, also, you do want potentially some uh, ruined blows instead of ruin res. Uh, you have the dragon who does poison and not much else. You then have astral giant, which is kind of the same stuff he always does. Buffs his physical attack, etc. You have Dine, who seems like mostly does physical attack moves and uh, honestly isn't that difficult. And then you have Genova at the end. She is uh, able to be debuffed as far as all of her attacks, but not her defense. And she does do fatigue and fog, which can be kind of annoying, especially the fatigue, in my opinion. So I would definitely bring something to work with that. Uh, you also want magic defense. Like this fight is so much easier if you have magic defense and you definitely need the sigil breaks. If you don't break her sigil during her phase, she buffs herself with a physical and magical you know, defense barrier. That will not go away if you don't break her, so it's really important to be able to do that. I'm going to show two different teams. Uh, one I'm not going to go over very much. This is the team that I crushed it with. I literally breezed through everything, uh, mostly using Tifa with Guide Gloves and Omni Strike for physical attack down uh, for sub equipment. This is just all set up for basically these stats. I mean, it's physical uh, ability potency, physical attack. And then down here for HP. Uh, and then we have Kimura Wand, which is kind of a no-brainer. These are my uh, anti-poison and anti-fatigue. Here we have healing, we have buff debuff extension, we have physical attack all. Uh, and over on red, we're using this for uh, physical non-elemental damage. That seems to be kind of, I think, the easiest way to go about this. Uh, other than that, I'm just kind of setting him up for physical damage and and whatever I could do. Um, like I said, not going to go over this team very much because if you can do something like this, you're not going to have any trouble with this dungeon. What I am going to focus on is a team that I made that is about as low as I felt like I could get. I will say I only got an S with this. I think I could redo it and probably get an S plus, but it took me 25 minutes to run the dungeon with this team. So I'm not interested in doing that again, but this will give new players, hopefully, something that they can kind of build towards in order to clear this. And that's what this video is focused on. I want to be able to try to help newer players because I think if you even have a six month old account, this dungeon should be no problem for you. So let's get into it. I'll start with uh, I'll start with red uh, and I kind of tried to be as creative as I could with this. So I went with his guild weapon. Um, the only reason I'm using this, honestly, is is gives magic defense all allies, which is going to be pretty nice against Genova, and it gives a cure all. So this is something that anybody should have access to as long as you have managed to find a guild. And I used it at OB1 because that's pretty simple to get. We have a cure here. Uh, this is just for heal, and this is also a stat sick for heal, with the idea in mind that I also have at least one X or circle sigil break. Down here, uh, Mana Ward A on Sleek Collar is pretty useful. You need some way to buff your magic defense. So this gives a mid potency buff to everybody. And that's exactly why I'm using it. Not using anything special here. Decided to go with Sled Fang. Again, these uh, debuffs here are very helpful in many of the battles. The fact that it has a very fast charge speed also makes it considerably more useful than something that would go slower. Here I used uh, Pumpkin Blaster for heal and magic defense. I used Chocobo Staff for the same thing, heal and magic defense. And I used Centipede for heal and a little bit of buff debuff extension, which obviously comes in handy when you're gonna be buffing magic defense and things like that. So we can see 2,500 heal. That was kind of the stat that I was pretty focused on with him. 7,500 HP is enough. Although you will see I do lose red at least once in this video. Magic defense also really high. I would say 187 is pretty good for you know somebody with an overall power of 60k. Coming over to Glenn, I kind of set him up to be, I guess, my main physical damage dealer. I'm using Ultimatic because it was the highest percentage weapon that I had on him. At least that's not, you know, 
OB6+. Plus. Uh, physical ability potency is pretty nice. Also like that it had a sigil boost, and that was something I really had in mind. Uh, using Steiner's Blade, this is a free weapon attack, limit break potency, why not? Um, as far as materials, I just went with physical attack on everything. Um, everything I could, except for this one here, I did make sure it was an X sigil. Um, I do not have a very high limit break for him, so you're going to be seeing me use Blazing Onslaught at level 5, because I don't use Glenn. Uh, as far as these weapons, I went with physical ability potency. That's what I was mostly concerned with. I didn't use my best. This is probably the, the best weapon that I'm going to use in this run. Um, and it's not crazy insane, especially since I'm not even main handing it on anybody. Uh, Zidane Sword, again, I have weapons that give better stats than these. But I wanted to keep it as low as I possibly could. So you're noticing here, uh, he's got pretty decent physical and magical defense. Uh, his HP is kind of low, but it'll be fine. And 3,300 physical attack, which is not that great, but we're going to make it work. Uh, and then last, we have Tifa. She's our secondary damage dealer and also uh, kind of jack of all trades. So she's the one who's got the healing uh, for poison. She's the one who's got the fatigue heal. And that's just because I really couldn't fit it in on anybody else. But what I really am doing with her, she's got Omni Strike for the physical defense or physical attack decrease. And yes, this is an OB-10 weapon, but honestly, this is also her main damage dealing weapon. 540% is not amazing, but it works. Now, this I actually just bought to do this video. If I could redo this, I probably would have gotten Cloud's Bat from the guild shop and raised it up and used him instead of Glenn. But I really didn't have that idea until after the video and I ran out of guild tokens, so this is what we're working with. This is kind of nice for some of these battles because it does give her a physical attack increase uh, mid potency, which is going to help because she's going to be our secondary damage dealer. Physical defense increase is also nice for a lot of the fights and the ATB boost is quite nice. I didn't have quite enough to get it to um, 25 points, but that's OK because, you know, it just basically made things a little bit tougher for me. But she'll always get a uh, three ATB at the start of every battle, which is really nice again. Uh, one of the reasons I use this, it has a sigil boost, and that was important to me. Um, the other thing I'm really going with with her is she's going to be doing most of her damage with limit breaks, to be honest with you. Dolphin Blow here is a great one because we're going to be debuffing most enemies, and so she'll get the times two damage. It's a fast charge speed, and we've set her up uh, in order to be able to just do as much limit break damage as possible since I've limited myself on the actual weapons I'm bringing. So here, this is a free weapon, BB's Magical Gun. It gives attack, limit break potency. Uh, here, this is not a free weapon. It's Glaried for Sephiroth. I'm using physical attack and limit break potency on it. That's actually the reason I brought it, mostly is for that those stats. And then here, I'm using Striking Staff because, again, it gives limit break potency and some attack. And, you know, I kind of, I did throw in one extra weapon that's not free, but, again, I think a lot of people will have will be able to build something with better stats than this, even if your account's only, you know, maybe three months old. But if we look down here at her abilities, you can see her limit break potency is level six. So 70% extra damage on those limits. And I'm really going to lean on that heavily to help me clear these battles and win these fights. I can tell you it took me 25 minutes, so I will be doing maybe quite a bit of speeding up. But I want to give everybody, just like I said, an idea. And, and if you look, this team has 181,000 power. And for an S ranking, I mean, that's that's significantly low. I would say even many new players can probably build a team that would fit this dungeon and, and be probably in the 200 to 250,000 power range, which would give you a significant advantage. That's everything I have to say about team setup. And now we will get into the run. Okay, so first things first, we are in the dungeon and we have to go fight Behemoth, no other way around it, and this battle is long, so bear with me, I do speed up quite a bit of this, uh, because this this battle alone took me nine minutes, maybe nine and a half minutes to clear, so what you really want to do is just make sure you're constantly debuffing him and buffing yourself whenever he's going to do a magic attack. Most of his attacks are physical, except for Flare. That's going to be magical. And so whenever you see him getting ready to do something like Flare, just make sure you jump on red, use your mana ward. Body Slam's the first big attack. It happens, you know, 
not too long after you enter. Uh, just make sure you are got him debuffed, you switch your stance, and then heal. And around this time, uh, pretty shortly here, I am going to speed it up. Uh, one thing just to note, though, is that when he gets into his sigil phase, you see how it's got a little magical cane that says counter. That means if you use Ruin Res as opposed to Ruin Res Blows, uh, after you hit three of those, he will do a counter, and you do not want that to happen. Uh, because I did not take any circle sigil breaks uh, that are, you know, Ruin materia i was unable to break this i think if i would have redone it i could have saved some atb with glenn and actually gotten it with the skull knocker but i didn't so i'm gonna get hit with the flare it's not that big of a deal especially because i did have you know magic defense buff up but here i'm just speeding this up considerably because this is a lot of just kind of rinsing and repeating uh, building up limits, using them, keeping him debuffed, keeping my guys healed, and just running through those motions over and over again. And this goes on for a long time. As you can see, he's got a huge HP pool, and I just am not able to do that much damage. I can tell you, even in like my whalier version of this run through, this fight probably took the longest of any of the fights. You also don't have any buffs yet uh, from, you know, beating other enemies, so that's just kind of how it is. After he does, does a couple things, he does debuff himself pretty heavily for a while. It's a good time to get in some damage. Uh, and then he buffs himself, starts a flare again, so make sure you're, you know, just keeping the buffs up. Sled Fang here is also really nice because it does debuff his magic attack. And it's the only way that I have on this team of debuffing magic attack. So I try to make sure I save that uh, for times when, you know, I, I need that debuff. Other than that, we're just kind of doing the same stuff over and over again. You can see here Dolphin Blow because of that uh, Limit Break potency is doing I, the most single hit damage of anything that I have on this team. And uh, other than that, I'm just jamming skills over and over again. And I thought about actually cutting part of this out and just skipping through about three or four minutes. But for those of you who actually want to be able to see the whole fight, this is a way of including it all just at 175% speed. So if you needed to see it, I guess at a slower rate, you can just slow down the video and play it at like 0.5 or something like that. But I think most people... Um, you know, are going to be fine. Just kind of make sure it's just very straightforward, making sure that you can survive the damage and then do damage. It's not really any crazy mechanics going on here. Cues up another body slam again. Same kind of deal. Not a not a big thing. I don't have any physical defense up on my team, except for Tifa's self buff so just kind of have to eat that uh, for the most part but still able to get through it without any major difficulties except uh kind of a spoiler alert um, i am going to lose red here uh and i think i think it happens momentarily um but luckily i've got him down enough that it's not going to be something that just ends my run there you go red Red takes it to the face, and he's down. And I can tell you, this is another thing uh, for especially newer players. If you're struggling with things like this, don't let yourself feel defeated and, and want to give up just because somebody dies. Uh, it's definitely not... It doesn't have to be a run-ender. And so even though Red's dead, I'm just... You know, I'm going to try my very best. And this was my first run-through with this new team that I made. So I really was trying to make it work. Uh, just under 20,000, not a great score. Here we're going to take the first uh, buff here as far as the trans ability because basically it weakens you in elemental damage but buffs your physical attack and I went with a non-elemental physical damage type of build so getting 25% attack just makes a lot of sense. Here we're going to just slam this cottage. We got two of them. There's an add-on fight here. It's pretty simple. And then we're going to come back down here and we're going to fight the dragon. Um... Mostly, this is what we brought the uh, poison cure for. He's not that hard, uh, but you just kind of, you know, if you if you have a poison cure, then this shouldn't be that much of a problem for you. Uh, Omni Strike here, he can be 
you know, uh, he can have his physical attack debuffed. However, mostly we're going to be using Omni Strike all the time with Tifa because that is the highest C ability damage that she has, if you remember from the beginning. So it's not like I'm always just trying to debuff. Sometimes I am, sometimes that's just her best attack ability. It does help, though, for things like the Dragon Stomp. Uh, and for uh, several of the bosses here that do a lot of physical damage, that is very helpful. Crushing Bite here, uh, I'm trying to delay this. I go ahead and combo it just to get extra damage in, but a good time, I, in the several times throughout this, especially with faster charging limits, if you see a boss queuing up an attack move, you can obviously like, cancel it or delay it is probably a more appropriate thing to say because he does do it again. Here you can see Crushing Bite, but by delaying it, it's going to take, you know, a few extra seconds for him to queue it back up, which lets your ATB build up and ultimately help you get more damage in before he goes to his next phase. Here he does a barrier, it's circle and triangle, which, as I've already stated in the last battle, I didn't really prepare for circle. Most of my um, sigil break boosts are on X, and at the end of the day, it's not fatal to the run either because we can take this dragon's roar and it's going to be just fine. I go ahead and use Sled Fang though, knowing that I'm going to take some sort of damage and that basically debuffed his physical and magical attack by mid potency. So that's fine. Red dies for the second time in the run though, which, you know, a little disheartening. I've, I've now lost a member of my group uh, two battles in a row and they're the first two of five but I'm sticking with it. And here I see the dolphin blows up. I'm waiting again. I see him kind of do an animation, like just a regular attack. And I'm trying to kind of cancel that out because I know that I'm in a little bit of a, a little bit of a jam here as far as HP goes. Dragon dives coming up again. And I'm fairly certain that Tifa will survive, but Glenn will not because he only has 946 HP. So when the dragon dive comes, I'm expecting Glenn to die. However, the dragon only has a sliver of HP left, so Tifa, who squeaks by, she's able to kill him off, and our run is still alive. 43,000, not an amazing score, but considerably better than that first one. Here, take the stun resist, you'll thank me later at Genova. Uh, that's just kind of a, a no-brainer for this run, you don't want to get stunned against Genova. Um, we pick up the Mega Elixir. We're going to use our second cottage now, uh, again, because we've just taken so much damage in these first couple of fights. And then we're going to fight Iron Giant. So I would try to clear the add-ons out first. I'm normally starting off with Wall of Will on Tifa just to give her the physical attack boost. Uh, I see Helm Splitter queued up, which is always the first move he does. Go ahead and debuff his physical attack. Make sure everybody's, you know, pretty topped up. Switch your stance. He's going to do a Helm Splitter. It's a single target attack. And you can tell there, Glenn, I mean, he hit Glenn for almost 4,000 damage. So if you didn't have the debuff on him, or maybe like at least a mid potency defense buff on Glenn, pretty sure he would have died. Here, we're just taking out these annoying screechers that luckily uh, can no longer stun us, uh, but they would love to if they could. Uh, switching back just to do Tifa's limit because. Astral Giant is debuffed, and I really don't want to waste limits on add-ons. So, we killed that off, and now we can at least just focus on uh, Astral Giant. Um, I, this is kind of the same thing as every other fight at this point, where it's a lot of just kind of rinsing and repeating, trying to get in damage when you can. One thing I am mindful, though, is his next thing is going to be a buff where he gives himself like a five-tier physical attack buff. So... If you notice, anytime I'm on Tifa, I'm going to be kind of hesitating to use ATB because I'm trying to kind of store it up for this right here in spirit. So we do an Omni Strike right away to clear off three of those. We're going to try to get in one more before he does his Grand Sword, which is an AOE physical ability. We hit him with that. Now he's down a tier. And then something hit him for another one. I didn't actually see what that was. But either way, uh, we survived this pretty well. I've queued up a cure right away. Everything's going pretty well at this point. I feel like I can finally kind of relax. Wall of Will on Tifa just to give her mostly the physical attack up because I know I'm going to dolphin blow here. And I just want her to do 
as much damage as I possibly can. We've got him now to about, I don't know, 40% or so HP. And uh, pretty easy here. Also, you, you'll notice he always does a pretty big backswing before he hits you. So canceling his animations is actually pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it. You can see right there, I go ahead and cancel with Sled Fang. Mostly so that uh, I can use that knowing that it charges pretty quickly and get that back up. And then I'm going to cancel again as soon as I get a chance with Glenn. Just waiting, I see the big attack animation, so I go ahead and cancel it with Blazing Onslaught here. Doing a little bit more damage along the way. And now I know I've, I'm, I've got him in a place where I'm not worried about <laughs> losing. The other thing about canceling that's pretty good is you know the move is coming. So switching your stance in order to block, you know, a portion of it is also quite easy. It gave Red time to build up plenty of ATB to instantly cure right after that was done. And that is Astral Iron Giant. Score here, 47,000. Again, moving along. These are okay scores. Um, we're going to take the Magic Defense up here in the middle. And that's because, again, Genova has a potential to be by far the hardest fight. Uh, her Magic AoE can just really start to add up. So we've built our team and focused very heavily on magic defense. Here, uh, I forgot that there's another box over here, so we're going to take that first because it, it has a guard jelly in it. And dying here is going to do physical damage, so I'm going to use the guard jellies on Glenn and Red. I'm not using it on Tifa because Tifa is the only person on my team that has a way of boosting her physical defense, but it's self-cast only. So... That's why I didn't feel the need to use a guard jelly on her. He will, uh, shortly into the battle, he will queue up his Molotov cocktail move. And that's a physical move. Um, you can't, you can't debuff him. I guess I'm just using Omni Strike because of the damage. But immediately after he does this, he's going to debuff himself or he'll be stunned momentarily. And he'll be more susceptible to all forms of damage. I was saving Dolphin Blow for when that happened. Here it is, the Thermal Overload. But uh, based on the damage that I see here, which I think is only about 16 or so thousand, yeah, 16.7, I don't think it actually did more damage because the debuff that he gives himself, I don't think counts as a debuff in the sense that, you know, like what, what her limit break actually requires to do the double damage, but that's okay. Um, one last thing, even after you kill him here, he will do a lot of times a Molotov cocktail at the very end. So if you want to be as efficient as possible, switch your stance after you've killed him just so that you don't take the maximum amount of damage. 57,000, that's actually a, a good score. Probably the first one. I think Dine's the easiest boss in the run. Here, I'm going to take Magic Down Duration plus 30 seconds because, again, Genova, uh, her magic attacks are what we're really trying to kind of play around. And since Slud Fang's our only way to bring it down, this will make things considerably easier for us. I'm going to use the Mega Elixir here just so that everybody's good to go. I'm gonna raise the magic defense of Red, Glenn, and Tifa. This should give me tons of magic defense and hopefully make this fight pretty easily easy. Wall of Will again, starting off, Tifa's always getting that ATB boost from that same weapon, so it's kinda nice to just start her off with extra physical damage so we can take things out a little faster. I would definitely recommend killing the adds first. Obviously, their screech is not stunning me, but this is where I was talking about, like, if you're getting stunned throughout all this, really would make this fight considerably more difficult. Tail laser's queued up, so we're going to use uh, Mana Ward A to give everybody the uh, magic defense buff, and then Sled Fang to take down her attack. So it seemed like a pretty good time to also just queue up the super combo. And just remember, um, in this battle, because you cannot debuff anything except for his attack or her attack, I guess I should say, should say uh, I always want to make sure if I'm doing a combo that I'm starting with red before Tifa, just so that she actually gets the extra damage from her limit. Here's the tail laser. You can see it's doing like a little over 2,000 per person. Uh, and so pretty important because that's with buffs on us and debuffs on her. Here's the sigil break phase. Very important to break her here. 
because if you don't, well, this one's not as important as the next one. Uh, the next one's a lot longer, and she'll give herself, you know, basically a physical and magical uh, defense shield. And if you don't break her during that, that shield does not go away. So here we're just kind of waiting for the next iteration of, you know, her sigil break. She does the double laser. I didn't even bother to switch stances for that. It's just a single target, and it's not a super amount of damage. Dolphin Blow is up. I'm waiting to see if I can cancel something. I see this preservation come up, so I think, hey, why not? All right, so she's going to queue it up again, and here we're going to have no problem breaking these sigils because I've got multiple uh, X sigil boosts. This is why you have fatigue, though, is because fatigue is going to make physical moves take considerably more ATB. Uh, one thing to note, though, is if you don't have it on manual, when you cast the Healing Asuna Fatigue, it will auto-target. Even if you have it on semi, it will auto-target somebody. So I took it off and put it on manual because I really wanted Tifa to have her ex um, sigil break up. But we broke through that, really no problem here. Um, probably the only thing that I really, really could have improved on is here, I'm going to do a triple limit again. I should have saved Sledfang because he already has a uh, magic attack down debuff, um, but it was blinking, which means I'm only going to be adding a little bit of time to it instead of actually refreshing it. And if I would have just waited with red, like, I think an extra, like, three seconds, he could have applied that fresh, and it would have lasted for the rest of the battle. But instead, it runs out right before the next tail laser. So I'm going to take, I would say, considerably more damage here from this one. Like, 2,700, just below 3,000, uh, where I was taking, like, maybe 500 to 600 damage less per character uh, when he had that debuff on. Which adds up because she queues up a few tail lasers in a row. And obviously it gets to be a little bit hard to keep managing both buffs and cures if you only have one character, like I do, <laughs> Red, uh, doing that here. So although she's getting low, you know, I, I'm also getting low. And luckily another sigil break phase comes and I have no problem clearing it with the quickness, <laughs> which is very, very nice. I'm just waiting here to be able to get that last bit of damage off with Glenn before I do my last combo, and I am fairly certain that Tifa will easily do enough damage to bring Genova down here. And there we go. That is the dungeon fully cleared with a team that's well under 200,000 overall power. Obviously, there were struggles, but we got through it all. And although we didn't get an S+, plus, and you're going to see it here, I think an S is still a really good score for a team of this strength. And I also think, again, there were some improvements I could have made along the way, and we weren't that far off uh, from an S+. Plus. I think this is absolutely doable with an S+. Plus. Hopefully this helped you clear it. If it did, subscribe for future content. If you already are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.